Um, okay, got it. So when I do this, um, Steph, I will not be able to see anyone. Okay, so if, if somebody wants me to stop, you really need to just let me know. Okay. So we're going to talk about, sorry, um, what is the, can, can you see the whole of this meeting is being recorded screen message? We just see your screen, Bishop. Perfect. All right, that's great. All right, so we're going to talk about what is convention 2024, what's coming before us, et cetera. So what is the Austin convention? So first and foremost, it's a gathering of the diocese that happens every year. And according to our constitution, right? Article four, section one, it gathers annually at a time and place set. It can be called at other times. I can call a special convention or when two thirds of the members of standing committee want a special convention called, it can be called. And it must happen, you must have worship. You must always celebrate the Eucharist and we have to have worship at convention, which tells us right away that worship is the primary task of convention, right? It's the one thing that's specified that has to happen. And then other work of the diocese. So who comes? So any clergy canonically and actually residents who are actively engaged in the work of ministry as recognized by the ecclesiastical authority. There's a lot to unpack there. So you have to actually live in the diocese and be canonically resident. And what that means is clergy don't belong to congregations. They belong to the to diocese. And some clergy live here who actually are resident, canonically resident in a different diocese. Recognized as actively engaged in the work of sacred ministry. Um, that means they're actually doing ministry, right? We have priests and in this diocese who are actually and canonically residents who are not engaged in the work of sacred ministry for a variety of reasons. They might be retired. They might be in nursing homes. They might no longer want to do ministry. They are not required to attend. If they're not listed as being active, they're not required. But if you are physically present, canonically resident, and actively engaged, you have to attend unless you've been excused. And then every parish and mission is entitled to lay representation. And I can appoint somebody from bishops, chapels, and specialized missions. So lay representatives from congregations who actually are considered members of congregations, they attend. And then convention officers. So the registrar of convention, the chancellor, the treasurer of the diocese, if we have a chair of the finance committee, some of these are still listed um, in our constitution and canons and the person doesn't actually exist. Like president of the ECW of the diocese. We don't actually have a president of the ECW of the diocese, but we it's still in there as somebody who, if we had one, would be an officer of convention. And then any guests. So these are the ones who are required to come or invited to come or by office um, come to convention. So what are the rules of convention? Well, the first rule is pray, right? So we say in our constitution canons that we open with worship and Eucharist and matters and worship is part of it. So first of all, pray. So worship and then formation. We're gonna learn things. Formation and fellowship. We're gonna be the gathered community of the diocese engaged in times of a play and fun and meals, those are an important part. So the rules are to bring yourself as fully as possible as you can to those aspects of our time together. Now, what are the other rules? When we do re formal reporting and voting and things like that, we follow special rules of order. Those should have, all, you already should have received those, um, typo here, and voting guidelines, 
and Robert's Rules of Order. And if you want to know who Robert was and why do we have to follow his rules, there's a really great video that was sent out um, that, that helps you understand why do we have Robert's Rules of Order. So pray, bring yourself as fully as you can to worship and formation of fellowship, and we'll follow rules set out um, that, that sort of help us do things in good order as we do voting and listening to reports and things like that. So people always want to know, what should I wear? And here's the thing, we're in the West, so the most important thing is be comfortable. And why I say that is I served a church in the East, and the rules there was wear a suit. Don't wear a suit. That, that would not be diocese of Spokane, right? Be comfortable. Wear clothes you're comfortable. And then it's October. We have no idea what the temperature is going to be like. We might have snow. It might be 80 degrees. So bring layers. And, and who knows what the temperature in the cathedral will be. It might be 85. It might be 55, depending on the weather. Bring layers. No expectation of formal wear. Many clergy will wear clericals, I'm, and clericals is the, what we call clergy shirt and collar, but not everyone will. And clergy are invited to vest for Sunday morning, so many normally wear clericals, at least on Sunday, even if they don't on Friday and Saturday. But the real key here is wear what you are comfortable wearing for any type of weather to be in, in meetings all day long, okay? No expectation of anything other than that. People always want to ask, you know, what will we eat? Will there be breaks? And what about snacks? So our meals are being catered and we're trying somebody new this year. We're trying the same caterer for the entire time. I think the meals are going to be great. Um, we will always have vegetarian options. All food allergy need folk are invited to go through the line first. We have a high priority in keeping our people safe. And so we want to make sure people get the food they need. We will have breaks. We will have snacks. We will have drink tickets. So you don't have to worry about, do I need money if I want to buy seltzer water or a glass of wine? It's it's provided. Sorry. Um, so what about convention offering. We take up an offering on Sunday morning. There's two offerings that are important to know about. The first one is the United Thank Offering. And that has been in existence for a hundred years, right? And it's a monetary offering of thanks to God for our blessings. And congregations take up UTO offerings and they bring them to convention. We gather all of them. We send 100% out to the wider United Thank Offering office where all of the offerings across the Episcopal Church are gathered together and then given out in grants. We have been recipients of grants in the past, but 100% of what is offered in UTO goes to the UTO and goes back out for mission and ministry. So that's one very important offering. And please make sure every congregation's offering is brought to convention and one person is designated to offer that offering at the Eucharist on Sunday. It's really helpful if that comes in the form of a check. If it doesn't, we'll count it, we'll figure it out. Um, but please make sure that that uh, you bring it. And checks are, are the best. We, are, we will take up a regular offering and 100% of that will go towards hurricane relief efforts. The, the Southeast is being hammered with hurricane and um, it, it's 100% is going to go back out to help with hurricane relief efforts. So um, just again, let your congregations know if they want to send two checks, one for UTO and one for the regular offering, um, that would be, they'll, they'll help us give a larger hurricane relief effort check. And the, and the regular offering convention always goes out. It, it, it doesn't stay. It always goes out for mission and ministry in the wider level, however that's, that's done, often to relief efforts. So what are we voting on this year? So we'll vote for nominees for office and any resolution submitted. And as of today, 
we only have one resolution and we have uncontested elections. So a pretty straightforward uh, convention in this regard. So what are, is that? Who's running for what? So we have secretary of convention. And we elect one person, the current secretary of convention, Kathy Lamphere, who serves St. Paul's Cheney, is running. She is willing to do it again. That's great. Diocesan council, we elect two people every year. They can be either clergy or lay. We have one of each running. We have Colby Roberts, who serves St. Tim's Yakima, and Wayne Hawks, who's a member of St. Luke's Wenatchee. Um, they are both running for council. And standing committee, we elect one clergy person and one lay. And the current nominees are Jan Griffin, who is retired. She had served All Saints Richland. She's currently retired. And then Pia Longinati, who's a member of St. John's Cathedral. Those are the nominees. So currently, we do not have contested elections. Now, anybody can be nominated from the floor of convention, but these are the ones who are currently nominated. And again, this was in your pre-convention materials. And what's the resolution? This actually comes from the Constitution and Canons Committee. This is a second reading. We voted on this last year. And we are, we are and it did not... Um, The, the changes didn't show up, but um, sorry, that's going from PowerPoint on my work computer to Keynote on my office computer. Um, but basically it's, we're saying that we need to have, um, for, we need to have a method of nomination for election in our canon, as opposed to simply being a resolution. We've already voted on this once and we voted yes. Any revision of our constitution has to come before a convention two years in a row where it we make it harder to amend the constitution a canonical change can happen with one convention a constitutional change takes two and make sure we really want to do this and we know what we're doing so then i wanted to show this these are proposed 2025 um, budget expenses I'm not showing the entire budget. We'll show this um, at convention. And again, I've seen that some of the numbers didn't translate from the PowerPoint to the keynote. But it basically shows you that when we think about where we are in terms of the overall budget, strengthening faith communities, the money we spend to help our communities grow stronger is about 24%, is 24% of our budget. When we think about formation and discipleship, and if we were to combine discipleship action, discipleship formation, it's about 21% of our budget. The office of the bishop includes myself, but it also includes the financial officer, communications officer, and the, the administrative staff. So that's sort of the, the administrative functioning in order for the functions of the administrative functions to happen on the diocesan level. And that's 28% of the budget. Paulson House um, includes, it, it's a little misleading. It's not just um, the light bill and heating bill. It also includes some meetings, for instance, convention. It, it's under this category. That's, that's a weird thing, but that's okay. Um, and then the wider church. So that's the, the um, our assessment to the Episcopal Church, our, the donation to Province 8, um, just some things like that. It's about 9%. And then we always put money away into reserves. We, I, I stress this all the time, put money away in reserves for things you know will occur. So we put money away for the fact that we will have general convention every three years that we will have the Episcopal Youth event, that we will have Women's Triennial, that eventually we will have a new bishop. But to put money away for those things that happen on a regular basis. So when they occur, we have money to fund them. And, and I really stress this, our congregations need to be doing this, right? And if I'm gonna say a congregation should do it, we need to make sure we're doing it too. And so, and, and what I say is 
two to three percent of your operating budget should always be going into reserve funds. And, and we put three percent. And then we're going to have questions. And so I'm going to um, stop sharing. And I went through that fairly quickly. Um, look, I wanted to stop and ask what questions you might have or any confusions. I have a question. Sure. So in that graph, you had the Paulson House. But how about uh, maintenance of the cathedral itself? Does it is it a budget item? Uh, it is for the cathedral. I see. It doesn't come out of the diocese. That's okay. correct. Okay. Thank you. All right, so some of the things, um, just to be aware of for this year, every one of you should have received an email with a unique link to take what's called the IDI, Intercultural Development Inventory. We really, really, really need you to actually do that, All right? Um, you, you will not be identified. No one's gonna see your inventory. That's going to somebody else and, and we see the aggregate, but we're going to be talking about that. And we really need you to do it. And if you can't find that email, Mallory Davis is the one who sent it. Look for her, look in your spam. And if you have problems logging on, I've heard of at least one person who, who tried six times and on the seventh time it magically worked. Um, I, I sometimes think about my mom who says, it's not working and I come in, it works just fine. And, and she gets upset. I don't know whether it was this person or her actual link, right? But it did work. But if you have problems, again, Mallory Davis is the one to reach out to. But please, please, please do that. We have to have you do it by Monday. So today is Wednesday. You've got between now and Monday to get it done. So again, it's the, a unique link for you to take the IDI. And if you haven't done that, put that at the top of your priority list. The other thing to know is that prior to convention, so starting at 11 o'clock at St. Stephen's, um, those who want to can come take what's called depolarizing yourself. It's a Braver Angels um, workshop for faith communities that we are offering you. So the registration at convention check-in starts at noon. This workshop will go until 1230 and you'll be given lunch. It is absolutely okay. We encourage you to go there first. You'll have plenty of time to get to the cathedral and check in and get to your seat at convention. This is gonna be a really great workshop. So please um, go ahead and do that. And then the other thing is that gathering day is this Saturday. So it's it's really, um, it's I know we're doing a lot of Zooms, but um, this, this Saturday is the gathering day by Zoom. And it's a great, it's gonna be really, really good. Stephanie Spellers, who is candidate of the presiding bishop, is leading a workshop by Zoom which will have practical teaching, a demonstration of the teaching, and then kind of practice the teaching. And, it, and it's about the how do we be in deep conversation with one another. So those are really important things to know. The gathering day on Saturday, do your IDI survey and um, the depolarizing yourself workshop. Um, we probably could, Caroline, send it to registered guests. I don't know. Yep. Did did we receive pre-convention information in our emails or was that info mailed to us? So you should have received an email with a pre-convention packet that had okay. all of the reports. And if you didn't, please let us know. We're having problems apparently with our email. 
So it, it appears that because the spam filters are being ratcheted up by everyone, we um, are sending it to a Google groups. And we just recently discovered that if we send the clergy and the delegate list at the same time, perhaps not everyone's getting them. So we're, we're really trying to, to send them again. Today, a whole bunch of emails went out. You might have gotten 15. Well, I slightly exaggerate, um, but it might have felt like 15 in an attempt to make sure you're getting what you need. But also all of the pre-convention reports are on the website. Special rules of order and voting guidelines are on the website. Um, anything you need is under the convention page on the website. And you should have received it by email. So, yeah. And Bishop, just to say, if you, we hope you will come to the depolarizing ourselves. If you are coming, please let Mallory Davis know by sending her an email. So we are sure we have enough materials and food. It would really help us if you would let us know that you're coming. We're, we're going to have, it, it's going to be a good convention. We've got, not only do we have a really good program planned, we've got full um, even song on Friday night. We are going to be showing the Philadelphia 11 movie Friday after supper. Um, we've got hold an evening prayer on Saturday evening. Uh, and we will be recognizing and honoring some folks Saturday during supper, as well as everything else we normally do. So really looking forward to this year's convention. And for those who don't know, it is our 60th anniversary as a diocese of Spokane, and our 160th uh, since the first congregations were started in the diocese. So it's a fabulous thing. Other questions? No question is um, too foolish to ask. I want to make sure people really feel like they are comfortable and prepared for a convention. Okay, I have a question, another one. Absolutely. So I've done convention in my former diocese. So this is the first time I'll be at convention here. Um, do we have like, assigned tables and is there like a chart of where to sit like I always worry about where to go and where to sit <laughs> so you'll be the first to hear that you're actually not going to be assigned a table this year all right it's going to be open seating which okay. I know some people are have gotten used to I, I remember when we first started assigning people to tables and I had somebody come up and say are are you trying to destroy me uh, I was like no, because we've done a variety of things. We've had people sit in congregations. We've had people mix it up. We've assigned tables. Uh, this year, we're actually letting it be, you know, the Southwest Airlines free-for-all. Right? You may sit wherever you like. What you can't do is move chairs, right? The number of chairs at the table is the number of chairs. So, and we need, and what you can't do is tell people, you know, no, we're full, if there are chairs on, still available, right? You, you have to be nice, be hospitable. Yeah. Um, but yes, great question. Usually that's one of my slides, but I took that out because we're not assigning tables this year. We're, we're doing an experiment just to see what happens. Yes, apparently Southwest is about to start assigning seats. We might go back to it based on what happens this year, but there will be times in the program where we really want you to probably more talk with your congregational members, which is why we thought let's not, because in the past, we've made sure that there's not a, every table had different congregations represented. So that really we could cross, talk across the biases as a whole and not just to the people we already know. Um, this year, it's it's more, okay, how are you going to apply this in your congregation? 
So having congregational time to talk makes no sense. So Bishop, if we didn't get that packet, who do we contact? Sure. So Tiffany Bade um, is is the admin, and I'm surprised you didn't get it at least today, because um, I believe it got sent out again today. I so I might still get it. I was um, I'm taking the place of somebody else, so I didn't get fully registered until just like the other day. Okay. So That's it's awesome. Tif <clears throat> it's Tiffany and what is the last name? Tiffany Bade. So Tiffany B at SpokaneDiocese.org. We have very simple email addresses, right? It's our first name and our last initial at SpokaneDiocese.org. Um, if one of my staff would, would put that, yeah, perfect. Thank you. The other thing is it's on the website. So okay. if you go to SpokaneDiocese.org, go to the convention page, you'll okay. see the Convention reports, special rules of order and voting guide. Everything that we sent out to you is actually on the website as well. Okay. Thank you. Sure. And if because you registered recently, you also have not received the IDI link and you have don't have that. What you should do is email Mallory Davis, Mallory D at SpokaneDiocese.org and get that link. I, I did get that today. Okay, great. What else? Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you all on the Zoom on Saturday. I know it's a lot of, of diocesan time, but um, the good thing is you the, the gathering day is simply a two-hour Zoom, so we, we freed up time elsewhere. Um, and then in person next week, it's, it's going to be a great convention. Really looking forward to it. So um, no need to stay on longer than we need to. And... With, with that, I will ask Kelly to stick on around for a second. And then uh, the rest of you, have a very blessed evening. And see you on Zoom on Saturday and next week in Spokane. Good night. Thanks, Bishop. And then there's me. <laughs> so in my email, what I said was, um, I'm writing to ask you to consider an appointment. And um, I thought about what appointment to ask you to consider. And there was a number. Uh -huh. Then I thought, you know, you're pretty busy. So um, what I was asking you to consider was an appointment to the disciplinary committee. It okay. is a committee that we hope never meets. Right. Okay entire time I've been bishop, it has never met. I can't guarantee that it wouldn't. Right. But if it does, I need really good people on it. And because okay. you're a teacher, you get this. You know, yeah. um, it's a three-year term. We hope we never call on you. The initial yeah. training is we send you a link for to watch something for about half an hour on Zoom. Uh -huh. um, if there's ever a need for the committee to meet, we train further. But um, again, usually it never has to meet. Yeah, I could do that. That's fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't get your email. You I don't know. know. Typed it in wrong or something. And yeah. It's all good. Thanks, Kelly. Good to see you. Thank you. See you. All right. Bye-bye.